Point of order, Mr. Stephen Doughty. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, have you noted the deep concern that has been expressed by members from across the House, both in the 170 who have signed um, early day motion 890, and those who don't sign EDMs but have made their views known publicly um, over the past week regarding the potential offering of the honour of a speech to both Houses of Parliament in Westminster Hall or indeed elsewhere in the Palace of Westminster? And I wondered, Mr. Speaker, whether you could tell us what approaches have been made to you and what conversations um, or discussions have taken place with the relevant authorities, the key holders for such a, uh, an approach to go ahead, and, and whether or not uh, there are ways in which those of us who have deep concerns about President Trump's comments uh, could make that known to the responsible authorities. Yeah, okay. To the honourable gentleman for his point of order, what I will say is this. An address by a foreign leader to both Houses of Parliament is not an automatic right, it is an earned honour. Moreover, there are many precedents for state visits to take place to our country. Accompanying the President is Madame Elena Ceausescu which do not include an address to both Houses of Parliament. That's the first point. The no Trump! No Brexit! No Brexit! EU Brexit! 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 The second point is, in relation to Westminster Hall, there are three key holders to Westminster Hall. The Speaker of the House of Commons. No to Trump! No to Trump! The Speaker of the House of Lords. And Let's shout together, no to racism. No. The Lord Great Chamberlain. No to violence against women. No. Ordinarily, we are able to work by consensus, and the hall would be used for a purpose, such as an address or another purpose. <laughs> by agreement of the three key holders. I must say to the honourable gentleman, to all who signed his early day motion, and to others with strong views about this matter on either side of the argument, that before the imposition of the migrant ban, no to Islamophobia. No. I would myself have been strongly opposed to an address by President Trump in Westminster Hall. After the imposition of the migrant ban by President Trump, I am even more strongly opposed to an address by President Trump in Westminster Hall. So far as the Royal Gallery is concerned, and again, I operate on advice. I do not perhaps have as strong a say in that matter. It is in a different part of the building, although customarily an invitation to a visiting leader to deliver an address there would be issued in the names of the two speakers. I would not wish to issue an invitation to President Trump to speak in the Royal Gallery. And I conclude by saying to the Honourable Gentleman this. We value our relationship with the United States. If a state visit takes place, that is way beyond and above the pay grade of the Speaker. However, as far as this place is concerned, I feel very strongly that our opposition it's going to take us many years you know to work on integration within our community
to racism and to sexism, and our support for equality before the law and an independent judiciary are hugely important considerations in the House of Commons. Point of order, Mr Skinner. Further to that point of order, two words, well done. Well, no, we shouldn't have, we shouldn't have, we shouldn't have clacking, we shouldn't have clapping in the chamber, but sometimes it's easier just to let it go than to make a huge fuss about it, but there you go. If there are no further points of order, perhaps we, order, perhaps we can now proceed. The clerk will now proceed to read the orders of the day. Your